Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to episode 24 of the Drunken Under Quarantine Show, presented to you by the One Mill Comedy Club. Uh, this week uh, should be a good week. We got a lot to talk about, a lot to unravel. Uh, tonight, both Colin and GW have managed to make it in with me, uh, and our very special guest tonight, Vinny Ebert. A bear. He's kind of a bear. So it works. Uh, tonight we are going to talk about foliage and the shit show that is happening in our state every year this time. Uh, we're going to talk about the Woodstock Inn, uh, who had a very large gathering that's blowing up on Facebook. Uh, we're going to talk about our very own Colin Doyle doing some work with uh, the founder of the Proud Boys, who happen to be huge in the news cycle. And number four, we're going to talk about the fact that our president finally got COVID. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I am going to pass it off to our first performer, a uh, very good friend of mine, as well as Vinny's, as well as Collins. Uh, please welcome to the spotlight stage, Mr. G.W. Foley. Yay! Woo! I always feel like like Bert from Bert and Ernie just being like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, slow week for me this week, uh, which is good, like. I'm going to college now, and I, uh, I've i realized that I don't party like I used to. Like, I, I want to be like the college kid to be like, yeah, it's Saturday. I'm going to get fucked up. But no, it's like, it's Saturday. It's time for naps and do homework. Like, I have never been this responsible in all my life, and I don't know <laughs> what's happening to me. The only nights I drink are Monday nights, and it's just because I'm with a fucking magician that has drunk in his title. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> if, uh, I don't know, if like 20 year old me saw me now, I think he'd be like, holy shit, we failed so bad in college, we're doing it still 20 years later. <laughs> and then go, holy shit, you gained so much weight that I lost. Uh, what the fuck is up with that? Um, I, uh, I, I have, uh, I have gained some weight since, uh, I was originally in college and, uh, I'm noticing it now as I, uh, have to sit for long periods of time in front of a computer. I'm like getting like old fat man injuries. Like my ankles are swelling where I'm just like, Oh, this is, this is not good. Like, I just, I just need to put my feet up for a moment and, and like, oh man i i don't know like you higgory is probably too young to deal with this but like there's just a certain point in a man's life when he just hits the point where like a recliner is beautiful you, know, you have to keep your feet up you don't have to do anything else you just sit there scratch your balls and drink a beer that's that's my life that's the american way that's uh if I knew about that in college, I don't think I would have failed out the first time. Um, I did get some cool news that uh, an art, uh, a interview that I wrote up got selected for a uh, journalism program in UVM. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was pretty special. And uh, I knew it was special because the, uh, the writing professor... Uh, emailed me and said, did you actually write this? I'm like, yes, that's right. That's uh, <laughs> that's the, the correct reaction I really want is, did you actually write this? <laughs> no, no, I paid some Mexican five bucks to do this. This is the American way right here. That's, uh, but that's my week. That That's all that's happened to me. So let's uh, carry it on to our next person. The uh, man in the mask, the power of our, everything I just said is backwards. Let's give it up for Colin Doyle. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Good, welcome. Check this out, Woolen Mill Comedy Club, boom, boom, boom. Made by my man Hickory right here. But I don't need this because I'm home. Good to see you boys, <laughs> episode 24. Always uh, my favorite part of Monday. Um, it's funny because uh, 
think about you know anytime uh like i travel or like i go to italy my 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 aunts always think i'm gonna meet like a nice italian woman you know i was like you know have this dream of me meeting an italian woman oh you gotta meet a nice italian girl you know and i'm like if i'm meeting a, an italian girl in italy um and like uh i like end up in a romantic situation whether it's going to be like every other italian woman i've ever been with who's going to be italian via newark not napoli i <laughs> mean <laughs> <laughs> just a jersey girl it's like that nah, ain't rome <laughs> that's jersey short i uh i kind of get bothered I, like i gotta share with you guys something that kind of bothers me is uh I'm not like anti-education by any means. I value education. I think it's great and everything. But I think people get a little too like up on their high horse when it comes to like education in college and act like, uh, you know, that somehow it makes, you know, you better than other people. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people are like, oh, well, in college, you discover yourself. You discover who you are in college. <laughs> it's like, Really? It's like you discovered who you were during your most formative years of 18 to 22? <laughs> I can't believe that. I can't believe that. You, you, you were 18, and then by the time you were 22, you had, quote, discovered yourself. Like, people only say they discovered themselves when they were, like, 18 years in college. GW is not going to come on the program next week and be like, hey, guys, you're not going to believe what I discovered in fucking college this week. Myself. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> like, and like, it's like such a ridiculous thing because, um, yeah, education is great. That's, but it's this like attitude of like, you know, like you're better than other people, which bothers me, you know, because I think education is great. But like I've said before, you know, in America, we're really playing this game called capitalism. And it doesn't necessarily reward the most educated, almost virtually never does you know what i mean it's like it figures out it rewards a person who figures out a way of making money and you can do that with or without an education not saying that you know he who is uh, you know it's its own form of riches being things you know and you don't want to just make a lot of money and be illiterate you know there's a fine line there but um i think that this uh, overall i think it's a little bit kind of a snitty kind of thing that i see and, and frankly it bothers me you know as uh, I went to college, but um, I always had like a different feeling about it. Like uh, even as a kid, like the idea of spring break always bothered me, you know, like, like here's like a, a 19 year old, like girl or guy without a job who's never worked, who's had an outrageously expensive college. And they're like, you know what I need to do? I just need a vacation because I have been trying to get educated for the last four months and I just like need a break from that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, I've been in the workplace for 15 fucking years and I don't take a week to Cancun. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you don't understand how brutal this college experience is. I've just been drinking and partying and having to study and I just need a break from it all, you know? <laughs> um, I feel like spring break is something like, that's a, like its own kind of type of privilege, right? You know, like going to your parents, they're working full time and you're like, hey, dad, buy me a cruise ship to Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> Like I told you, mom, I need more margarita money. It's like, I, uh, I don't know. Um, I feel like a lot of uh, people in Vermont work in the service industry here and they get like kind of like annoyed by, you know, the way uh, people behave when they're on vacation here. And like, you end up with people like having a bad reputation, right? Like New Yorkers, like everyone from New York is just rich and entitled and blah, 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 blah. It's like everyone from New York who comes here <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like everybody else there's there's you know some uh asian woman pushing you know uh cans and soda cans you know down the sidewalk she's not like the the antithesis of like you know new york privilege you know what i mean but it's the people who come to vermont to go skiing and they're used to traveling all over the world right you know they're used to going to resorts and uh caribbean and different places where they're used to having a level of service brought to them you know when you travel internationally it's like people are there to try to serve you you know and here we're not into serving people we're not the we're not the into serving anybody in this country it's not what we do we don't do it well we do it very poorly <laughs> compared to the rest of the world and and uh you know i have a friend who works at a ski shop in killington and he told me he's like he's like 
you know, it's ridiculous. She's like, women will come in while I'm in the ski shop and they just literally take their foot out and be like, like put the boot on me. <laughs> and they want him to like go over and like actually put her foot into the boot. And he's like, that's ridiculous. You know, I'm like, put your own foot in the boot. And I'm like, bro, you're selling $700 boots. <laughs> <laughs> Like the only pair of boots she has that are more than that are like some Jimmy Choo's that she bought on Fifth Avenue. You know what I mean? Like you take that boot, you put her foot in it. All right. And then you ring the cash register out for like a couple grand, you know, it's uh, I know it's miserable, but it's part of the game. Um, I think it's funny because you can always tell who, when you're on this, on the mountain, you can always tell who's from Vermont and who isn't because if you're from Vermont, our stuff never looks that good. You know what I mean? We're, we're not wearing the cutting edge technology, you know, we're wearing Carhartt. <laughs> it's like yeah. getting North Face, it's Carhartt. That's a that's what we call a Carhartt onesie, if you're actually doing it. <laughs> You gotta have some duct tape somewhere, you know, if you get a jacket that's good, Vermonters, we're not getting rid of that. We're duct taping it <laughs> forever. It's like it's you know, it's like I, I like this jacket. I'd like to get another 10 years out of it if I could. You know? <laughs> Whenever I see a, a guy that's riding down the, the mountain and you just look at him and you're like, if the gloves that you're wearing look like you just stacked wood before you got to the mountain with them, <laughs> probably from Vermont, right? <laughs> probably not a weekend warrior from Connecticut. But uh, that's been my week in reflection. We had a great show this past week at the Woolen Mill. A lot of fun to see everybody. And um, uh, it was a very magical evening. And um, we'd like to kick it over without further ado to my man, Hickory. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Colin, for hosting a show at the Walden Mill this week. It was awesome. And I am going to show you guys a clip from that. Uh, as normal, the audio is a little quiet. We're going to be working on fixing that. But let's see, uh, let's see how it went. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, let's try this again. We're gonna do one more card one. So, uh, by show of hands, it's cool that I take off my jacket mask. Go for it. Okay, just check it. I want to make sure people, you know, cool. don't hate the drunken underwhelming right off the bat. You'll learn to hate me later. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. One last trick with the hat before we get into this. Gotta produce beer. <laughs> God damn it, these masks make me thirsty. <laughs> oh god, that was that was close to it. <laughs> that might require a chaser. <laughs> <laughs> say dick inappropriately because it sounds like dick. <laughs> uh, let's continue, sir. I'm going to ripple through and I'm going to have you say stop whenever you're... Stop. Right about, right about there? You yeah, want me to go a little farther. One, one more? One, you want me to go back a few? One, two more. Right about there? Is <laughs> yeah. that good? And that's, you like it. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be your card. We got an eight of hearts. Makes sense. Yeah. Everybody cool with that? <laughs> Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, set that right there. Oh, I'm sorry, the purse is in the way. I want you to make sure you're able to see this. Ooh. Pretty, pretty fair and clean. There weren't any weird magician's tricks there. I didn't do anything weird. And people ask me, hey, great the drunk. I'm underwhelming. How the fuck would you find a card that you lost squarely in the middle of the deck? And tonight, for you fine folks, I'll answer that question. You gotta have a trained eye. And if this one, this one's got a little astigmatism, it doesn't see quite right. But <laughs> if you just look through this deck of cards, what, uh, what you will find is that there is a card that would stick out. And I don't know about you guys, but that blue card would stick out like a fucking sore thumb to me. Uh, so you guys, um, you know, I'm a magician and all, but uh, sir, that was your card. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, so I see that you have some hesitation about believing me. And uh, we're going to put this hand sanitizer to use. And I'll just stick that blue card right there. And we're going to try this again. <laughs> I, I was going to... Uh, here, let me uh, cut them and give a riffle. And uh, whenever you're ready, sir. There. Okay, right about there. Okay. And now, sir, uh, top... Bottom. <laughs> bottom. Yes. Yeah, bottom the card. That's your new card. You got the three of clubs. Everybody cool? Everybody cool with that selection? I hope so, because you fucking made it. We're sticking to it. So, we're going to uh, I'm gonna give her a little shuffle for to make it appear like I'm fair. Uh, if you guys ever made a magician, um, don't trust him, because he will cheat. <laughs> uh, we're just going to go back through here, and uh, that blue card should pop up any fucking time now. <laughs> uh, uh, fuck. Well, you know, we were close, okay? <laughs> we, were, we were close to doing a two timer to make you bleed. Oh, that's right. There's only one blue card. Sorry, this part's off camera, but. So I'll use a card to flip it so you're sure that I'm not doing any crazy magician stunt here. So, sir, is that your card? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now that I've. Uh, Prove myself as a, uh, a decent magician. I'd like to show you some stuff that, you know, uh, might not work quite as well. So uh, <laughs> here's uh, with uh, my second favorite love, my third, because uh, the beautiful assistant and uh, alcohol are like Biden one and two right now. I don't know which one's right, but salt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because what fat alcoholic doesn't love a good dose of salt, right? So, uh, what happened is I found this cool little thing. I was in a, a dollar store, uh, just uh, drunk as shit one day. And, uh, I mean, who doesn't get hammered at Family Dollar? Drumlin, man. I mean, if you're not sneaking beers and drinking them while nobody's looking, you're not living. Uh, but I found this, and I thought it was kind of cool. And it was, uh, you know, like a little kid's toy. Uh, magic set, and it came with a, a red lid and a little purple container, which you can see is clearly empty. And I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to use this during my show at one point. The fucking humidity's killing my salt over here. But I'll show you guys how this thing works. <laughs> and please be aware, this is the, the child's version. <laughs> But if you just set that in there and lit it, and then you take the lid off, fucking salt disappears, right? Which is crazy. And you're like, where did the salt go? And it's, well, it appeared in this other hand. And I was like, you know, that's kind of cool. Uh, you know, it's a kid's toy. That's kind of neat, but I'll show you guys how like, uh, like a real adult magician would do that. Um, because I don't need the little toy. I do need another drink. That's uh, Those masks dehydrate me like a motherfucker. I don't know how that asshole behind the meat counter, meat and fish counter at fucking Woodstock Farmers go through it all day. But that prick's got some gumption. <laughs> He's an asshole. If you stop in there, tell him I said fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you how an adult magician would do that shit. You just pack it down in its fucking hand like that and show you that there was no salt in that hand. And they'd be like, oh, it's so amazing. Oh, oh, look at that. He just blew his load. That was... No, that's fucking salty. I don't know. I don't know if I love that so much anymore. Gotta wash that down. <laughs> Oh. Well, yeah, you think we guys got time for two more or one more? Because I don't, I don't want 
want to climax too quickly, uh, which I've been known to do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the beautiful assistant will be doing a Q and A after the show. If you want to ask her about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you guys. That was a little long, but that was a fun set we had. Uh, that was just a quick little seven minutes of uh, I don't know. I probably did twenty or twenty five the other night uh, with Dickie B and Colin down at the Woolen Mill. Nice little social distance show. It was a blast. Uh, so uh, without further ado. We're going to turn it over to our special guest. Uh, we'll see what the man has to say. And uh, please welcome to the stage uh, one of one of the most important people in Big Guys Entertainment, Misty, Mr. Vinny Herbert. Uh That's probably because I outweigh Pierre by a, a good hundred pounds. <laughs> that's the only reason why. Um, thank you for having me uh, back. Uh, last time I was here, I was with my partner, and and you guys separated us because too many big guys on one screen causes a disaster. So, <laughs> um, so thank you for having me back. As you uh, may not have known or do know, uh, we do do a podcast, Pierre and I. Uh, as you can see, our logo is – oh, it's just that reverse thing I, I can't do very well. Uh, big Guys <laughs> Podcast, uh, Big Guys Banter. Uh, we do that on our uh, on our website at bigguysentertainment.com. Uh, you said I had what two minutes to plug all my stuff. Oh yeah, three to five. Did... <laughs> so uh, and, and and we keep pretty busy. We do we do some live shows. Um, I'm not a stand up comedian like uh, like Pierre is. Uh, so he goes out there and does the stand up. I um I just do all the tech stuff behind the. I, I'm the one that apparently makes elves disappear. I'm really not sure what that is all about, but um, that's apparently what I do. But uh, we do game shows and trivia, and uh, and I have found an excuse to play video games during the day by calling it work, and I stream live uh, now that we have COVID. So as soon as COVID is over, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself um, because I won't be able to cheat and, and play video games during the day and call it work anymore. <laughs> it won't be an excuse anymore. Um, so uh, I, I don't really have much. Um, the other, I do a, do another podcast if anybody's out there, out there is interested. Uh, I do a old time radio show program uh, called I Love Old Time Radio, and uh, that's what I do. Um, I know that wasn't two minutes, but uh, that's the best I got. Well, welcome to the show, Vinny. It's great to have you <laughs> well, here, sir. Uh, Colin G Dubs, thanks for making it out. Episode twenty four. We've been doing yeah. this for twenty four weeks. It feels like we're on episode five. I thought this was supposed to end in like fifteen days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I I lost count, but I'm pretty sure we're on like day one hundred and eighty to slow the spread. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hickory, you got to get me off the screen, man, because if I'm here all the time, they're gonna just like oh, want no, to watch no. me all the time. Oh, I mean, <laughs> no, no, you're uh. Spotlight. There we go. We're good. Uh, no, we're in full view. Uh, so, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, another wild week, uh, as always, uh, since we started the show. There is not a slow news cycle ever. Uh, it's just one thing into the other. But we thought for the first subject tonight that we would uh, we'd bring it home. And uh, we'd talk about what all those assholes are coming up to Vermont for right now. And that is the foliage that's already fallen off of the trees and landed quaintly on the ground. Um, I can't even see my yard anymore. It's just, <laughs> it's just orange and yellow. And I'll say my yard looks beautiful, but the trees are pretty barren. Uh, so I thought I'd ask you guys your opinions on, uh, on what you thought about the chaos that is, uh, I don't know how it is over your way of any. I know that uh, it took me 20 minutes to get through Woodstock the other day to get gas, which is normally like a, four to five minute drive at most um well I, I fortunately live in a city so we don't have to worry about it too much i'm not in rural woodstock or or any of that nice uh touristy area i'm in essex so not a whole lot of tourists come here that must be nice <laughs> yeah. uh g how's it been down in rutland you notice an increase in traffic down your way sir yeah well i uh I, I kind of wanted to give them shit, but my neighbors had a whole bunch of people over, like, <laughs> and, and like, 
they were leaving groups. I'm like, oh, they're all fucking leaf peepers. Like, <laughs> my downstairs neighbors are all from Massachusetts. And so there was a whole bunch of Massachusetts cars and a car from New Jersey. I'm like, you guys aren't quarantining. That's that's my big concern is you sick bastards. Like <laughs> bringing up here in bringing the corona. And I I wish they would just go home. Like I I don't know who the asshole was that first was like, hey, let's go to Vermont. It's pretty there. Like, <laughs> Like fuck you! Come in November when everything's brown and looks like shit. Like that—that's the true beauty of season. Colin, I, know, I trailed off there. Oh, Sorry. it's all right, man. Uh, Colin, what are you thinking? Well, you know, this is the thing: is is this is a, a very entertaining uh, time of the year here. For anybody <laughs> who spends time in Vermont, this is the type of uh, time uh, where we answer really, really stupid questions, right? People come up and they'll ask like, hi, I'm wondering where I can buy some fresh maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back in like, you want the, the fresh maple syrup. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's funny too, because it's like these people drive, they live for this, right? They live for the foliage. They're so excited to go apple picking. You know, I can't wait to go apple picking. Has anyone ever really enjoyed apple picking? Like, can we just quit? The- <laughs> Like, it's like, it's, it's literally picking fruit. It's not like some, you know, Dionysian experience that leaves you like, I picked apples today. It's like, it's not drugs, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, Woodstock is particularly fun because as Vinny pointed out, it's a place that everybody loves to go. And, um, and uh, they drive like assholes. Um, and uh, I know we're going to get into it a little later, but um, my feeling is, is, is like right now, it's like people like to come anyhow uh, to Vermont. Now people are coming to Vermont because we're literally, we're not allowed to travel anywhere in the world. Right? <laughs> <laughs> because of the way people have behaved in these communities that have been totally horrible. And a friend of mine made a post basically saying like, well, you're in a tourist economy, like you guys don't really have a choice. You, they have to come here and just like basically deal with it. And it's like, yeah, kind of. But it's like, you know, at the same time, it's like you're coming to another place, like you adhere to the culture, right? You know, like if you're in a certain place that takes off your shoes, take off your shoes. If you're in a certain place that insists on wearing masks, wear your mask or don't. It's not for me to not go. It's for you came here, not, you know what I mean? And like, right. if you're in someone else's house it's not like i walk into someone else's house and be like i'm here now if you don't like it you can leave and like huh and I, what the hell is the logic is this? uh the part i hate about leaf peepers is that they i know they all come from these big suburban places where you'd straight get mowed down if you didn't obey the crosswalk rules <laughs> but they get here and they're in vermont and it's like it's like they've never seen a fucking crosswalk before Right. It's like, oh, oh, there's a crosswalk 10 feet that way, and there's one 30 feet that way. I'm just going to cross here. Uh, and <laughs> it, literally driving through Woodstock is uh, like trying to play Frogger in reverse. Like, you're, <laughs> you're just, you're just, your head's on a swivel, and you're just waiting for the moment that some asshole walks out from behind an SUV that you can't see in front of you. And uh, I'm honestly surprised that I've lived this long and not uh, hit somebody illegally crossing the road in Woodstock. I had a woman today who was standing in the middle of the road taking a picture of a store. Not in a (laughs) crosswalk, just standing in the middle of traffic, taking a picture of a store. And I'm like driving up and I'm looking at it. I'm amazed that I didn't hit her. And she turned around and she saw me and she just had this total look of disdain. And then like looks at me and then turns back and proceeds to like take a picture with what looked like a disposable Kodak camera. (laughs) How dare you drive your car on the road, you ass? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you know this is foliage? <laughs> I, I, I found out yesterday, because I saw my daughter yesterday, and found out that she only recently, and she's heard the term leaf peeper. She had never heard the term before. And I feel like a failure as a father because of that, because she's, she's grown up in Vermont all her life. Are there really people out there that do not know the term leaf peeper? Well, uh, does she does she know them as Flatlanders? That was going to be my question. 
<laughs> I just found it weird because I grew up always knowing that this is the time of the season the leaf peepers are out. So I was just I was just confused if anybody else knew of anybody that did not know that term. Yeah, that's fairly surprising to me, my friend. Uh, yeah. Uh, G Dubs, you looked like you were going to say something. I was going to say, first off, Colin should have hit her. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and my second thought was, Vinny, you're a failure as a father. Come on. Uh, okay. <laughs> that, you just, Thanks, G Dub. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I I I prefer mass holes personally. Mm -hmm. like, I've heard that term. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like flatlanders, but the only problem was I lived in Minnesota. Like shit's pretty fucking. Yeah, it's it's pretty something. Oh, oh the flatlanders got them. The flatlanders oh. got them. <laughs> it's just gonna be. DDS attack from uh, Matt and all the mass holes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, G Dubs will be back in a minute. That was uh, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, hey, <laughs> all right. Wow, I, I the... take back everything I just said. I'm sorry, <laughs> I mean, he learned his lesson. <laughs> My bad. I love you all. <laughs> Iowa's flat as fuck, though. <laughs> Apparently, anonymous has a real sweet spot for uh, <laughs> for flatlanders and mass holes. Uh, we're anonymous. We are in we are in Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> we do not forgive. We do not forget. Uh, oh. Anyways, uh, as a side note on the subject, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, the beautiful assistants. Um, I'd like to call it a side gig, but it's her. <laughs> we like to pretend like. Being a magician, <laughs> the main gig, but her uh, her main gig, she runs the front desk at a hotel, and she had a woman called the other day, and this woman asked her uh, if she came up around, and she used the term Columbus Day, which, by the way, uh, my friends still use, which doesn't I, I hate because I have to then be like, dude, I'm the biggest redneck in the group, and I can still call it Indigenous Peoples Day. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, but a woman called on the phone and was like, hey, uh, if I if I come up around uh, Columbus Day, will there still be good foliage? <laughs> and my 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 wife <laughs> took it took a second to compose herself and she's like, excuse me, miss, uh, they'll be good. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, foliage. We were going to come up for the foliage. <laughs> she'd be like, oh, you're talking about foliage. Uh, you mean all the leaves laying across my yard? Yeah, no, next week probably won't be a good time for that. Uh, she also had a woman call and ask if Thanksgiving was a good time to come up to see the foliage. Ugh. She said, no, uh, actually, Thanksgiving is a good time to come look at our sticks and freeze your ass off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of the time that we enjoy uh, taking a step back in the service industry because... Uh, there's no snow yet and there's nothing to look at on the trees well well i like this idea though you know it's like kind of like christmas is you know starting earlier and earlier every year why can't we just make foliage and later and later you know what i mean like come to vermont for november foliage and don't forget your skis <laughs> like, yeah. we just gotta we figure just, out like, glue the uh, leaves back on the trees or something yeah so i'm yeah. gonna say we just need to pay some uh some cheap labor to go out there with a hot glue gun and just glue the leaves back on yeah okay i've always Governor's... wanted to oh go ahead man i was just gonna say that i've always wanted to take and uh take a tree somewhere like close to route four or a place that everyone's looking for it and just get like a bunch of cheap blue paint and just like <laughs> the tree and like have it go viral people being like in vermont being like they said you're not gonna believe the colors but a fucking blue tree <laughs> <laughs> Uh, last comment on this subject I wanted to joke about uh, Colin you brought up apple picking and all I can think is like the irony of people uh, coming up here to do the labor that they pay other people to do back home <laughs> it's astounding <laughs> like, yeah hey uh, and and get COVID at the same time because we just got to jump up in, in COVID because yep. 
at, at an orchard. It, it would be like me going to the city and being like, guys, I really want to see the sights. I'm going to run a street sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really make sure I can get that authentic Boston experience. Just driving around, having people honk at me. I, I mean, you make off. a good you make a good point because I don't even like using the self checkout because I don't work at a I don't work at a store. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting paid there. I, I'm not doing that. No, why am we, I why am I picking apples? Well, see, the least they could do at self checkout would be to give you like a training course. <laughs> yeah, they don't give you a discount and they should, GW. Oh, oh no, no. You have to give yourself the discount. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I've been doing wrong all this time. I've been paying yeah, full man. price. You forgot to put in your employee code. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you look down, they're like, do you have anything under your cart? You look down under there and you'd be like, no. Those two cases of water are clear. I can't see them. Nope. <laughs> you know what I love about the self-checkout is it doesn't work at any store that you go to. So they employ someone who's not a cashier. They just stand <laughs> next to the self-checkout and have to correct the system every time it screws up. It's like, go for self-checkout. I'd like to buy a case of beer. Well, you can't really self-check that out. So uh, why don't you come over here to cashier? It's like, did we gain anything by this? Really? Right. <laughs> no, it just took you longer to purchase that beer. Yeah. <laughs> I felt you lost really time. Sorry. I felt really awkward because when I was living in Minnesota, I was uh, buying a novelty gift for a friend of mine because it was his birthday. And uh, I bought him condoms and some lube. And uh, <laughs> I ended up going through self-checkout. And of course, the thing kept, like, fucking up on me. Because who, who wants to take lube through self-checkout? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that couldn't possibly be the most embarrassing purchase ever. <laughs> and, and, and so, like, I saw the woman correcting it, correcting it. And finally, we got it done. And I was leaving. She's like, hey, you have a good night. <laughs> i'm just like wow that's i feel fucking awful for buying this one gift it's for my friend yeah. really really it is <laughs> it really is this time i swear uh moving on to the next subject of the evening uh we're going to talk about kind of on the same vein as all these people up in woodstock for foliage uh is that uh a photo is going mildly viral on facebook right now uh, it'll actually be interesting to see if it catches any traction with the news. But uh, the Woodstock Inn had a giant wedding. Uh, and photos were captured of people. And I don't know if they had a wedding, they hosted a wedding, whatever the technicalities are. Um, I don't work for them, so I don't give a fuck. But uh, <laughs> basically, they had a giant gathering of people in the town of Woodstock, where the town of Woodstock itself has a mask ordinance uh, where you are walking alone by yourself on the green with no one around you and you're still supposed to be wearing your mask. They allowed hundreds of people to gather shoulder to shoulder with no mask wearing for the ceremony. Uh, and actually, uh, I saw it a couple times and then uh, Colin shared it on uh, uh, Facebook today. And I, I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that shit. Um, like, at least have the decency to wear a mask if you're going to go to a town with a mask ordinance. It's not enough that the state of Vermont has one, but this individual town has one. And it'll be interesting for me to see if uh, if the town takes any action on this or they're just going to, oh, well, it brought in a lot of money. Like, <laughs> that's kind of what I assume the reaction is going to be. Uh, first, we'll go to you, Colin, because I'm sure you had uh, you had strong feelings about this. Well, you know, yeah, I, I have to say um, I was very disappointed to see this photo because uh, I like the Woodstock Inn. They're, they're a, uh, a flagship resort in Woodstock, but I felt the hypocrisy of them not adhering to the rules that we all have is, is just outrageous. Um, the Woodstock Inn is owned by Rockefeller Resorts out of New York City with an annual trust that uh, it gives them an allotted cash amount of $10 million a year to operate, whether or not they have a good year or a bad year. Very few hotels and businesses have something in place like that. That's literally a safety Very net few. To, 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 that prevents that business from failing. And so when we have things like the Woolen Mill Comedy Club that we've had closed for eight months, we go to do our show, we had eight attendants, 
we're going to cap the space at 12, you know, and everyone else is suffering. The hypocrisy of having a resort that's as affluent as, as, as the Woodstock Inn, having a complete and utter disregard for the, the, the way that we're supposed to be doing handling this stuff is really appalling. And the thing is, too, is, is to, to your point, Hickory, you have chosen to have your event in a place that has a mandatory mask. And what the whole irony of the situation has just bothered me from the word go, and this is just another example of it, is people have screwed up their own places that they live, their own communities, their own towns, their own states. They have numbers where they can't open their schools. They can't do all these different things because they didn't want to wear masks. They didn't want to distance. They didn't want to you know, take the, anything serious. And so then their whole economy starts collapsing. But then Vermont, where we've we isolated, a lot of Vermonters stayed at home. We, you know, wore a mask. We did everything. And guess what? We did better than anyone in the whole country. So now everyone wants to come to Vermont. Oh, let's go to Vermont. But they don't want to come here and do what we've been doing for eight months to keep us the lowest place in infection rate in the country. They want to come here and they want to behave like they did in Connecticut and in New Jersey and Massachusetts, which have been which, you know, they had huge rates of an infection. So to me, it's just the irony of like, if you want to behave like that, then stick your ass in Connecticut. Don't come here and then endanger everybody here. And then in the weekend, Monday, you're heading back to Connecticut. And meanwhile, you've now taken and you've brought uh, COVID into an entire village that it was unnecessary. Um, exactly. Vinny, your thoughts? Well, I, I mean, kind of going along with what Colin said, because I'm, I'm experiencing the same thing with my girlfriend's family. Uh, they're coming here and, and they and they want to get together and go to a restaurant that doesn't require face covering. And I'm like, well, then you need to go to Minnesota because in Vermont, everywhere requires yep. or supposed to require face covering. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 really simple. It's it's the easiest thing you can do to prevent the spread of this stuff. And the fact that um, and I get we, we've had a ton of uh, uh, big guys entertainment. We do weddings and we've had a ton of cancellations. Uh, entire our entire 2020 schedule was canceled and moved. Um, so I, I get wanting to, cause it's a big business and I get wanting to take that business and, and, and be able to, to host weddings and stuff like that. But people gotta, people gotta be smart about this. Cause you're not just infecting uh, your immediate family, but everybody that worked on that, that, uh, that wedding, uh, the DJ, the caterer, uh, the, the venue, everybody involved in that. And and they're going home to their families, and that's how this stuff spreads. So yeah, I, I'm I'm completely on board with what Colin said about about the um the um uh, just the the lack of of common sense on this. Uh, G Dubs opinions thoughts. I say fuck it, don't wear a mask. <laughs> 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 yeah, here, here's the thing, like like clearly like. If any of those people were from Vermont, fuck them. They're fucking stupid. And so they deserve to get the COVID. <laughs> Secondly, like, if any of those people were Flatlanders, which from the looks of the full row, most of them were, <laughs> fuck it. You can get the COVID and bring it back to your shitty ass fucking dirt town, wherever the fuck <laughs> you come from. But, uh, like, yeah, I feel bad for the, uh, the, the, the caterers and the waiters and stuff like that but you know if you're gonna be just stupid about it you don't like if you play stupid games get stupid prizes and i, I also feel like if i was a waiter at that event and i knew that there was a mask ordinance and I walk into this giant group of 200 people not wearing masks and just hanging out, I would have like, fuck you. I'm going home tonight. Like you guys can fucking run this yourself. Uh, uh, or at the very least, I would wear a mask. Like, like just, just because you're in a room full of idiots doesn't mean you have to be the stupid one. Like, yeah. Like, the one thing that kills me too is that like all summer, Vermont's wedding limit was 12 people. 12 people. Do the math. That's not even enough for the bride and groom's parents and their grandparents. 
You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, that was your whole wedding was 12 people. So they go from 12 person limit to this. And the craziest thing is, is we could have killed it with the wedding season in Vermont this summer. Oh, it was beautiful. Every wedding that you wanted to have in Vermont. We have farms that have massive fields. We have space galore in Vermont. We could have Grammy over here and 35 feet away, we could have, uh, you know, cousin Joey sitting on a uh, hay bale and do beautiful, you know, farm weddings, you know what I mean? But instead of taking advantage of the expansive fields of Vermont, let's put everyone together in literally what's the Woodstock Inn's Rose Garden. <laughs> what happens, you know, it's like. Yeah, it's uh. It's a crazy fucking, I can't believe they did that still. Uh, we'll move on to our next topic, which uh, is that our very own Colin Doyle uh, produced a commercial. Well, he didn't produce it. He acted in a commercial that was produced alongside the now, uh, one of the top trends on Google, I think right now is uh, Gavin McInnes, uh, who for those of you who don't know, uh, founded the Proud Boys uh, based on a joke that he made on a podcast with somebody. And uh, Colin happened to work with him. And uh, we're just going to dive into that right now. Uh, questions first off is, uh, Colin, how are you so honored to snag such a gig? I know this was, uh, and what, what year was that, by the way? Um, that was probably... 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. Okay, so so Gavin wasn't as well known as he became. So, so Gavin, for those who don't know, Gavin co-founded Vice. Yep. Um, back, Vice when they, back when they were Vice and not whatever they are now. Yeah. Back when they were edgy Vice. They were super edgy. They started in Montreal as the voice of Montreal. They went to Brooklyn and it was a very successful publication. Gavin left for um, creative differences. And uh, Vice ended up going and being worth, now it's over a billion dollars. Yep. So Gavin actually lost a fortune when he gave up his ownership of Vice, which he did willingly, which was really insane because today it'd be worth, his ownership would have been worth over 500 million. Um, so he walked on that, then he started Street Cartage and he's a Canadian. And what people don't realize is that like he, Oftentimes they say that it's easier for the left to make political jokes um, and you don't see a lot of comedy on towards political, toward, you know, uh, political comedy coming from the right. And Gavin actually is one of the only people that I know that I've ever met and worked with that is able to make really funny jokes coming from the right in a way that actually kind of hits on topics and he's very unique and talented in, in that regard. Um, but he says things that it's like uh, he knows how to get people going. And so he's written articles. One of them was called uh, Asian Privilege in America. And he talked about how <laughs> the, that, that the Chinese are just privileged and they get all these things in life that they don't have to work for. He really, in many ways in the article, is talking about white privilege in America. But it's funnier when he, when he blames a Chinese person for those things. Yeah. Um, and uh, he made another one, 10 Things I Hate About the Jews. I don't think he really hates the Jews. I think that he thought it's funny because it's, it's politically incorrect to do that. Uh, he wrote another thing, women are happier in the kitchen than they are in the workplace. Of course, everyone got outraged about that. And then when he came <laughs> talking about things about chauvinism, he realized that the chauvinist thing was like something that really riled a lot of people's gears. So um, the, the Proud Boys was started as a, as a club for Western chauvinists. Yep. And it was in and of itself is funny to say that, oh, we're a group for Western chauvinists because it's so outrageous. And I think everybody probably realizes it's not politically correct to identify as a Western chauvinist group. So it's sometimes it's what's shocking with Gavin says things and people don't even realize that the joke's on them because you if you take them too serious, you're the he's making you look like an idiot. And that's exactly what he wants. That's what he wanted to do from the word go. Uh, yeah, I was actually reading one of the... Uh... Uh, Proud Boys official statements the other day and uh, they basically stated after the um, which we'll get into is the Proud Boys takeover of the hashtag on Twitter um, that they had released a statement saying that they are they don't care uh, they have homosexual members um, and basically they formed as a group that is sick of cancel culture that's sick of everybody getting offended about everything 
um, and they formed as a, a men's fraternity that just uh, likes to wave flags and drink beer. Uh, so it's really entertaining for a guy like I, who've known about them for three or four or five years now, uh, to see this group get smeared. Uh, especially with Gavin, because he's a fucking comedian. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's not like this guy is fucking Richard Spencer or one of these other scumbags that just, you know, is all uh, alt-right, white privilege, white nationalist type dude. Like, first off, he's Canadian. Yeah. And B, he's a comedian. And the whole thing started over a joke. Uh, God, I wish I could remember what podcast it was on. <laughs> but they were, uh, they were joking about uh, uh, Aladdin. And uh, there's a song in Aladdin where there's a line about uh, go out and be proud of your boys. And he made a joke about like, oh, what if we formed a, a, a patriotic, patriotic fraternity uh, and we called them the Proud Boys and we had all these ridiculous rules. Like the first, the first level to entry is you have to uh, state that you love your country. Uh, and the second is that we stand around you in a circle and we continue to punch you until you can name five breakfast cereals. And like, that's the type of ridiculousness <laughs> that's being vilified right now. Um, G Dubs, I'm sure you have some opinions on on the Proud Boys and this whole whole thing. But uh, I think they're cute. Like, and, and I think that's the ultimate insult for them is. Cute <laughs> cute. I, I I think it's cute with their little slogans and, and the way that they they run things. I think it's cute that they think that just the way they are. Um, well, an interesting side note, Gavin isn't even a part of the Proud Boys anymore. No, no, no he left back in uh, like 2017, I want to say. Yeah. Um, Enrique, well, I guess there's no general leader. They have a lot of leaders because it's really like a fraternity and there's individual groups. But the most well-renowned one is Enrique Tario who is the uh, Proud Boys leader in Seattle. Um, and thank God that we are so progressive that CNN can call these people white supremacists and they have a black Cuban leader. Yeah. I mean, that's really <laughs> progress in, in America. <laughs> we got a white supremacist group. Led. It's that affirmative action, man. It's yeah. Affirmative well, action. We got to get them in there, man. It's like... <laughs> I, I can't remember the guy's name, but it, it's Daryl something or other. He's a jazz musician who um, talked to the Klan. And, oh, and had, yeah, I'm well aware of this guy. Uh, convinced a whole bunch of Klan members to get away from the Klan and to drop the drop the hood, basically. And, and he's uh, successful there, at it. Yes, very. Um, and and one of the things is that there was a meeting with um, or some kind of gathering where they were talking about free speech and stuff like that. And the Antifa there called this man, a black man, a white supremacist. You, so you were talking about a gathering that actually Tim Poole was trying yeah. to produce in, uh, in Philadelphia. And they were having it at a hotel and they referred to that as that. And um, the organization that does not exist that is referred to as Antifa kept calling, uh, <laughs> say that for legal reasons, uh, kept calling in and threatening the hotel with like bomb threats and violence and they end up having to move the venue for that and uh yeah that's the, a, the problem is is people don't do any research on this stuff they just hear something and they just pass off this information without actually looking into it i never heard of the proud boys before biden mentioned them at the at the debate never heard of them and uh, so i'm looking up all this information on proud boys and and that it being talked about a white supremacist group and you guys are talking about it and giving me a backstory that I had never heard. So it's uh, like on a look side note, Daryl D. Davis is who you were talking about, GW. Matthew Ferguson just commented that in to let us know. Oh, good. Thanks, Matt. And the one thing that I think is funny too to note is that while Gavin was at Vice, he had a, a thing called Do's and Don'ts, which was like a fashion blog and different things. And so he would say, uh, like where GQ would say, buy this Versace jacket. Gavin would say, don't buy this Versace jacket. Do buy this old t-shirt that has a picture of a deer on it. And, and so, he, he, so he, 
through that like sort of movement of irony became he was known as the godfather of hipster dome so wow. a lot that of makes perfect sense who, if you look at hipster that that gavin style that he even has today with the mustache with the suspenders um when uh, i worked on him the commercial i acted and he actually had written and he showed up on a bicycle this beautiful bicycle with a brown leather seat and a basket on it and he rode his bike from brooklyn you know and he was that guy he was like he was like the original hipster and i think it's funny that probably so much of the stuff that's going to go and there's going to be attacked is is the same people who are like tattooed unwillingly they don't even realize that they got tattoos because of like gavin's influence and their facial hair and their haircut is actually modeled off of haircuts that Gavin said were do's versus the don'ts. And he actually has influenced so much of style and culture um, through Vice and through the way that he did things that people are completely unaware of. So I think it's funny that people are gonna be uh, probably criti you know, criticizing his role in that, even though I think that this was just another political stunt on a long list of things that he did knowing that and i think he distanced himself from it knowing that as things if as violence ensues or as these people who are just people who are from wherever get involved and do things that he had nothing to do with he stands the risk of them being thrown under the bus and saying well you're a terrorist organization you yep. know or you're you formed a terrorist organization which i don't think honestly was his plan you know well, and, and quite well, frankly, I mean, a militia or anything like that, they say it's like a militia, <laughs> having a militia is kind of a different thing, which is kind of a joke, too, because like literally it's a f to sum it up for viewers who don't know who the Proud Boys are, is they're essentially a, a fraternity of Western chauvinists. Their slogan is the West is the best, and they truly believe that American culture and the Western culture is the best thing in the world, and that's how everybody should be. And they're unapologetic about it. They don't give two fucks about what you think, uh, which I can commend because I, I feel like I share some of those values. Um, but they are a fraternity. They don't allow women in, um, which raises some flags with some people. But they have a separate organization now called the Proud Boys Girls uh, so that women can join that uh, organization. But I mean, as just like a fraternity, you know, you like women don't join fraternities. They have sororities. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see as being a guy who's known about this thing for three or four years now to see the fucking crazy slanders in the media, but especially with the Proud Boys takeover on Twitter, which was really the subject we're going to talk about here, uh, where, <laughs> where all these gay men, uh, and props to them, like, fuck yeah, go out and make out and post photos, um, because a lot of people would pay money for that. And if you put it up for free on Twitter, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe we need to get a Proud Boys Girls one trending and you guys can, you know, we can have some chicks making out on there. Uh, that would appeal to me a whole lot. That's some uh, forward thinking. But the the fact that <laughs> that these people, the irony of it is that these people still have enough bigot in the back of their minds that they thought just because this group identifies as conservative or on the right wing that they would be super offended that gay men would take their hashtag um that was the irony to me is that like there's still that just that perception that just because <laughs> just because you're a little bit conservative you hate gay people uh which is the opposite uh, proud boys have gay members yeah, they, uh, that's when they said they're like we're proud of all boys regardless who you fuck <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> on their official statement yeah they said we don't care who you fuck uh, as long as you're unapologetic about it. I, I would just like to say for those who, who don't know what we're talking about I acted in an underwear commercial oh like and you should go watch it uh, after you finish watching this uh, go over and go to Colin's Facebook and watch this commercial because it is phenomenal. <laughs> and uh, at, at the end of the commercial, I uh, wipe my ass across Gavin's face and someone splashes <laughs> a glass over his head. But the funniest thing about it was we had to shoot the commercial in English and then we also had to shoot the commercial in French. So when it, it, when it aired in France, it wouldn't have to be dubbed. And, and Gavin's like Quebecois and, and speaks French. So after we did the commercial in English, he would have to say, ew, is that some guy's ass? And then they would hit a thing over his head. 
but he had to say it in Fran and French. So I would literally be crowd surfing as people like rolled me over. I would be trying to rub my ass across Gavin's face. And then he goes, he falls off this. <laughs> and, I would hit him. <laughs> and honestly, hearing him do it in French was one of the most hilarious things I've ever had in my life. I would literally be, as I was crowd surfing, I would be holding my sides laughing. It was so absurd and ridiculous. How many bottles do you think they broke over his head that day? We, we, I think we did, of the stage dive, I think we did four takes in each language. So I think we did like eight times. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it was just it was just so ridiculous. And then Gavin, we get cleaned up. I'd go to do it again. And he'd be like, also flesh, yes, he's... <laughs> it just the, the 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 timing of trying to get the ass across the face and then the bottle smashed over his head it was uh it was really uh a hilarious day but gavin was uh he was um interesting guy to work with and uh he very much uh, uh his production company rooster actually and um I think he's just someone that, like, honestly, he, he's played everyone the full so many years. And he just knows how to go on to these news outlets and he knows what to say to fire people up and how to do it. And he's a master of that. So, I mean, I would say if you actually were to sit down and talk to him one-on-one -on -one about a lot of things, I don't think uh, he believes half the shit he says. No, just like most comics do. And uh, I'll just point to the simple fact that Last week, although Colin can mention it, uh, we talked about having sexual intercourse with fast food for at least five minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I say plenty of shit that I don't believe. <laughs> like, like, like three quarters of the shit that comes out of my mouth, I'm like, oh, I'm just saying it because it's funny. Like, not, not that I actually believe it. I agree. Uh, speaking of, uh, we'll get to our last topic. We're going to run a little over. You guys are cool with that? We're at about a two yep. minutes over, and uh, Vinny, Vinny's good to hang out. Uh, last subject, we're just going to talk about uh, our president, uh, Mr. President Donald Trump of the USA, has finally got the coof. Uh, it's uh, amazed me that it's been this long and that that guy has met with that many people, had that many meetings had that many rallies uh dude's been working around the clock since march uh, early february march when he formed the coronavirus task force and uh started doing that and um i would say over the summer i i, I think he's getting a little more rest today but i i was watching a lot of the uh uh the press conferences over the summer and you could just see every day he was a little more tired uh <laughs> But the fact that it took this long for him. It turned out it was Lyme disease. Just some <laughs> thick Lyme disease is what we had. Uh, just the fact that it took him this long to get it is absolutely stunning to me. Uh, I thought I'd get you guys' uh, opinions, and we'll bat that back and forth a little bit. Um, I, I was surprised it took this long. That was what I got when I, I heard that him and Melania – tested positive. And secondly, uh, if you were going to have to quarantine for 14 days with any of the first ladies throughout history, uh, Melania would be my first pick. I don't know about you guys. I Pass that question over. Lady Bird Johnson. Who? Lady Bird Johnson. I yeah? Know. Yeah. Laura Bush. <laughs> <laughs> the Silver Fox. <laughs> Uh, Vinny, if you had to pick a first lady, the quarantine was for 14 days. What do you think? Um, well, if I'm going for attractiveness, it'd probably be Jackie O or Michelle yeah, Obama. Be. But if I'm going for something a little bit more interesting, we're going with Nancy Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, what about you guys? Are I mean, pre-death. Pre-death, not now. Uh, were, were you shocked that uh, it took him this long or shocked that he got it? or uh, If he got it. If he got it. Well, yeah, we'll see, I suppose. I, uh, I think this was a big ploy from uh, the right just to drum up votes for the sympathy vote. Like, like the whole idea of like you can't switch a candidate mid-war 
like the whole reason why Bush got in twice. Like I, I think this is like Trump's war is, is the coronavirus. So with him going, he's a victim of this war, and we can't vote him out because you know we're we're midstream. We can't stop pissing midstream. We need to keep pushing forward. And by the way, I would totally uh, be quarantined with Marshall Washington now. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking like between the bones and dust like she probably looks a lot like this i i must imagine i, I think that looks pretty good for marshall wash martha washington like i i just want to use it like baby powder like just crunch her up a little bit <laughs> throw that fucking gray wig right over there and be good to go all right uh that's a possibility uh i guess we'll see if so uh, it would prove that Trump is right, and this is the biggest fake news cycle we've ever well, seen. You know what they said? <laughs> Going along with GW's point, they said that um, the president of Brazil and Boris of, over in England, that their their approval ratings went up after they had COVID. So that might be the tactic he's going with. So, You know, what, what blows my mind when I first heard about this is I had to think about Air Force One, right? And uh, Air Force One is not a plane. It's a, it's a military term that means the president is, air, is, uh, is airborne. And we take very elaborate procedures to prevent both the president and vice president dying at the same time. They're not allowed to travel together. They're not allowed to mm -hmm. fly together. Um, all these different procedures. When uh, Air Force One is about to take off, an um, individual walks the entire length of the airstrip looking for pebbles or any type of debris. And if there's a pebble, they pick it off the airstrip and they throw it, right? Uh, all of us fly commercial all the time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they don't give a shit about the stones, you know what I mean? And so that's just like one procedure. And so I find it so shocking that anyone could be even get close enough to the president um, that was sick without having to go through some type of uh, barrier to prevent that. Right now, I talked to a friend who was um, at uh, Chappelle's place in, uh, in Ohio where they're filming. And you get off the plane and they give you an instant COVID test. It costs a tremendous amount of money. And not until you are cleared, they give you a bracelet and then you can approach Chappelle. But like nobody gets close enough to Chappelle to even talk to him or breathe on him without that bracelet. And I can't believe that we're not taking that same protocol with the president of the United States of America. Well, Chris That's Wallace cool. talked about that um, on his interview with Fox News about that even before he got to a chance to talk with them way back in, in March or so, they had to go through this whole process of, uh, of getting checked out and that everybody is checked out every day, yet it still got through. Yeah, so that's what I don't understand about. And then it's to me to think that, you know, you got a guy out there picking stones off the off the, the airstrip to make sure that the plane doesn't go down. But now a woman's going to walk onto the plane with COVID and sit down with the president of the United States and breathe on him. And even if the thing is in his demographic, let's just say it did kill him. It, that would be like a borderline like assassination of being able to get mm -hmm. that virus that close to the president for it to affect his health. So um, I definitely think with a lot of things with COVID has been bullshit this whole time, the downplaying of it, the upplaying of it, every which direction that they take this thing is like false flags all over. And I would say the saddest thing in America is right now is that when they come out and they say the president has COVID and literally most of us think to ourselves, that fucking guy's lying, you know? And like, that shouldn't be your first thought of assuming it's a lie or assuming it's bullshit or uh, assuming this is all one big coup and you hope and i've heard the medical professionals talk today the medical professionals really did seem sincere and um a lot of this you know herman cain got it and he's dead and uh there have been world leaders that have gotten it and various things so it's really hard to read between the lines on this and really figure out what what's going on and if there if there is something for him to gain in the republican party to gain what is it you know, maybe it's a sympathy vote, um, no, but it seems. 
Also, it's a hard one for, uh, I saw that people are giving doctors a hard time about not being fully disclosing everything in their like first couple press conferences. And it's like, dude, HIPAA is still a thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like I get that you guys like, like that everybody wants to know exactly what's going on with the president all the time, because that's what pulls in the money for CNN and Fox and them. But um, I mean, like the dude's personal health is still his business and like what transpires between him and his doctor. That was the other part that blew my mind is that everybody discredited these doctors and I'm like, because they, you know, they made uh, statements that differed a little bit. And I'm like, but it's, I get that he's the president of the U S but he still has the rights of every other American citizen. And one of those rights is that I don't have to tell you shit about my health. And my doctor can't unless I sign a paper that says he can't. Um, that that shocked me that people were like, oh, the doctors were lying. It's like, no, they, they're they disclosing what they can. And yeah. I'm sure it's not just uh, President Trump that's making the decisions about what those doctors can disclose. There's a team in on that saying, hey, this is what we should say and this is what we shouldn't say. Because um, in previous times, uh, if a pre-social media, I'm pretty sure, uh, the the American people wouldn't be told. And, and given COVID's a different thing because we haven't had a national or a global pandemic since, you know, in a hundred years or whatever, but uh, pre-social media, uh, nobody even knew the president got sick. You, you know what I mean? Like, and, that's, and that's the other thing is, is like, if even if he had it, for public, like if Trump was just disappeared for a couple of days, right? And he went to a hospital, like none of us really need to know about it. And none of us would know anything about it. You know what I mean? Like none of us are really paying attention to the, the daily, you know, day-to-day -day activities of the president. So for them to even be public and for him to announce it the way he did via tweet and saying, I have COVID, like at his demographic, that could have been a death sentence. You know what I mean? So like the casualness of it, opposed to him like going in, you think he would undergo treatment and then almost as he's recovering, be like, and by the way, the president had a thing like this, we've had to deal with it, he's doing well. But for it to be almost like, by the way, I know you're gonna shag you, I got COVID. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? What are you saying right now? Yeah. Like, you're gonna tweet, you got COVID? It's like, don't, I don't know where or when, but uh, son of a bitch, I got COVID, you know, it's like, it just, it all seems a bit strange, you know. Uh, G Dubs, your thoughts? What do you think when you heard the news? Uh, I definitely thought that, uh, you know, good for him. Good for him for releasing that information. I would have kept that shit quiet. I, I would have just been like, no, 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 I got the cold, man. Like, it's just a cold. Like, we're good. <laughs> Uh, yeah. we're, we were also talking about how it might be a sympathy vote thing. And, uh, you know, since I, uh, as you guys might have guessed, I mingle with those uh, who consider themselves conservative or libertarian. Um, some of the conspiracies going around online, which I don't prescribe to, but I do like to look at because conspiracies are fun no matter what side you're looking at, is that uh, Joe Biden's going to announce in the next two or three days that he is now positive with the goof and uh, try to rake in some of that, uh, some of that sympathy vote, uh, which who knows, it's just a conspiracy. My last question of the night would be, uh, since this is, uh, I don't really want to talk about uh, the possibility of the president dying or anything. So we're just going to use uh, candidate A and candidate B for this, uh, this uh, situation, because I'm sure it's unprecedented. But we're at a point where uh, a lot of people have mail-in votes this year and a shitload of people have already either mailed in their vote or dropped it off. Now, if candidate A is the incumbent and he happens to die in the next two weeks, uh, or candidate B is the challenger for the seat and he dies in the next couple of weeks, what the fuck does America do? <laughs> and, and what happened to those votes that you voted for um, for a dead guy uh you guys have any idea on what the protocol would be would we just postpone the election a month and try again that's when you vote c and go third party <laughs> I mean, 
be the first year Joe Jorgensen actually had a chance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there. This is the ballot right here, and there are a ton of people on. That's all on the on on this side. These are all the. Yeah, there's like twenty seven. There is it, and Kanye's here at the bottom. See there. Oh, there's Kanye. who's running me? Oh, Michelle Tidball. Yeah. So oh, there's a ton of choices if if the the top two get uh, get out there. <laughs> So and I have, as you can see, I have not turned mine in yet because I'm kind of, I'm kind of waiting a little bit, you know. Well, no, but I almost feel like if, uh, like, if you had already voted, assuming that things were going to be normal this year, that you like might get to re-vote if, uh, if the guy that you voted for, you know, like you, I wonder how that works with like a, like, uh, okay, so candidate A dies uh, like five days before the election, and I mailed in my ballot. Like, can I go to the voting booth and be like, hey, guys, so my candidate died. And <laughs> here's the deal. I was kind of hoping I might vote for somebody else instead. Uh, and secondly, um, it raises the interesting uh, conundrum <laughs> of if a dead person votes, it's voter, pro- voter fraud. <laughs> but if a person votes for a dead guy, is that voter fraud as well? <laughs> This has been the most 2020 segment <laughs> that I can possibly think of. Now, here, what happens if one of the candidates dies? But <laughs> the candidate gets enough votes to become president. Well, because I would assume that the if, the if it was the incumbent that the vice president would take over, but that's for the remainder of the term. I would assume the vice president doesn't just absorb the votes that the president got for the next running. I don't know. I don't, even think I, I don't know if they have some. Yeah, I don't think they have anything like that. You would think that by in the, in the 250 years that this fucking country has been going, we might have figured out a contingency plan. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you, I, I have not seen anybody bring up that point. That is a really good point. You know, I need to I, find the answer to that. I, I thought about posting something thing but i also uh i don't want to get like hunted down by the fbi or the cia <laughs> for posting such a question uh which is why we speak about it in a hypothetical situation with right a and candidate b but why? but it's something to think about it is an interesting thought process because i mean hopefully this is the last time we have two 70 year olds running against each other but uh yeah no <laughs> now the next because the next election is going to be guys in their 80s no it's going to be uh i think hickory the drunken underwhelming and gw foley are going to command the ballot next year um and then uh we're, we're basically going to make call in the secretary of state and uh we'll just have, have we'll just put the rest as our guests on the show and give them jobs and then we'll do a <laughs> podcast and it'll be fucking awesome let me tell you, the swamp, my friend, just got a whole lot muddier. All right. <laughs> let, let me ask you guys: Do you do you want to see some debt disappear? <laughs> give me a hint. It's in the swamp. <laughs> you want to watch some jobs magically appear? Vote Hickory the Drunken Underwhelming and GW Foley, 2024. <laughs> oh yeah. It's coming. We don't know what party we're running at. But, and uh, for his grand illusion, Hickory the Drunken Underwhelming is going to make GDP disappear. <laughs> well, I think you can get on the I think you can get on the Boiling Frog uh, a party. The Boiling Frog party? Yeah, why not? I didn't know about that one. I had to look up some I saw on my ballot the other day. Uh, I didn't know who the Abolition Party was. The, no, the Prohibition Party. There's still a party that's pushing for prohibition of alcohol, which, uh, which just from the show, fuck you people. <laughs> I, I'm I looking at the ballot. I don't say that. The... I don't say that mildly. Uh, I really hate to shit on any political candidate because if you're going mm-hmm. out and at least trying and putting out a platform, you're doing better than a lot of fucking Americans. But uh, yeah, if you're running on the prohibition of alcohol, you can suck my nuts. I tell you, I, I tell you, Hickory, uh, you have choices here because uh, on, on the ballot this year, 
You got the boiling frog, bed and bread and roses. You can join the grumpy old patriots party. Um, they're <laughs> they sound like a fun group to hang out with. I, I assume that's like Kevin McTaggart with gray hair <laughs> with an American flag behind him, drinking moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> the boiling frog party i assume is just a bunch of people who create memes of pepe um i don't know if you guys who know who that is but that's a yeah a conservative meme and the bull moose too there's a bull moose the bull moose party yes they're back <laughs> oh, i didn't <laughs> know they <laughs> left <laughs> Uh, I think that about wraps it up. We're fucking 20 minutes over. This has been a great show. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, let's run around the room and uh, plug some socials. Uh, Vinny? Uh, big guys, DJ, wherever social media is at, we just are big guys, DJ, everywhere. Uh, Colin? Uh, check us out, Will and Mill Comedy Club. Um, we're back up and going, live programming. And I'm uh, going to be continuing through October, looking at doing something Halloween night. So stay tuned for that. And uh, catch me here every week. Hickory Drunk and Quarantine Show. And GW Foley, where can we find you, my friend? At Foley Kills on Twitter, Instagram, and Parlor, And GW Foley on Facebook. I should fix that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and does anybody have anything to say before we... Uh... We get on out of here. Wait for next week. Thanks for having me. Vinny, thank you for being here, sir. Uh, next week, we have Vinny's partner on, uh, the great Pierre Vachon. Uh, it'll be our 25th episode, uh, which is cool. Uh, Pierre was our second episode guest, um, which is kind of like the first, because the first was GW, but we adopted him, and now he's a member of the cast. Yay. So uh, it's kind of like having our first ever guest and our second ever guest on for the 25th episode and then next week we'll let you guys in on a secret about episode 26 which will be represent half a year that we've been doing the drunken under quarantine show and we have a surprise event planned and it's going to be fun as hell uh i hope all of you all have enjoyed the show uh big thanks to uh matthew for commenting uh thank you ej for letting me know that i look svelte in that footage uh that really helps um Makes me want to get even more drunk and underwhelming. And uh, please follow me, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Parlor at Hickory TDAU, or just search Hickory the Drunk because there's not that many of us. Well, correction, there's a lot of drunk hickories, but very few of them announcing it on social media. So come <laughs> out and find me. Until next week, I hope you all uh, stay safe, stay drunk, stay underwhelming, but most importantly, Stay sane. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>